Hi, friends, and welcome to Addiction Free, the traveling TV show. I'm your host, Evangelist Candy Rose, and I am here in Little Rock, Arkansas, at the Landers Harley Davidson in the parking lot because Broken Chains Motorcycle Ministry has put on an event here with singing, free food, door prizes. It's been wonderful. Other motorcycles came and we just had a wonderful time of unity in the Lord. Now, you've seen last week's show, we featured them uh, from Poen Assembly of God and from Broken Chains Motorcycle Ministry. Well, this show is another one that's from the same event, and we're featuring Honor Bound, which is an Assemblies of God motorcycle ministry, and Christian Motorcycle Ministry, someone is, is here from. So, text somebody and tell them we're on the air. Hi, I'm Howard Rainey. I'm U.S. Missionary Chaplain with Honor Bound Motorcycle Ministries. God has called us to the northeastern corner of the United States to work with bikers. Guys in the bike community are guys that I've called on layaway to hell. That all they all they need, all that needs for Satan to uh, to claim their life is for them to die. But one came 2,000 years ago by the name of Jesus that purchased their salvation so that they wouldn't have to spend an eternity in hell. We love the biker community and God has called us to hope, helpfully break the chains of darkness in the biker community with the light of Christ, to disciple the changed and also to release the trained into ministry. We're going to be doing this by going into their clubhouses, the bars, rallies, any place there's bikers, that's where we wanna go. Also, we're going to present the gospel of Jesus Christ through personal evangelism and we're going to see many bikers give their lives to Jesus Christ. Another thing that we are desiring to do is to set up biker friendly churches and pastors, a network of, of, of churches that will help us so that when these bikers get saved, they have a home church to go to, they have somebody that's going to disciple them and love them. Another area is to the women in this culture. Debbie is going to be working with the women in, in the biker culture to help them, to let them know that they do matter to Christ and maybe to just see their lives changed. One of the areas, too, that a lot of folks don't associate with bikers is the children. There are children, there are grandchildren that are associated with every biker out there. And we believe this, that if you save a biker, you're going to save his family. And so we're giving all the praise to Jesus. We are U.S. missionary chaplains. I didn't introduce my wife, Debbie. This is Debbie. Her biker name is Sassy. You want to say something, Deb? Uh, Sassy has a whole new meaning to it, but it, it is a ministry of called Serving and Supporting Sisters in Excellence. And that's what I'm hoping that God will begin to open up doors for me to minister to women because they are sometimes used as property and abused physically and mentally. And so I know God's going to be opening up doors. If you're interested in joining our team, we'd love to have you join us by most of all your prayers, but we also need monthly support. If you're interested in joining, you can go online by doing so, going to giving.ag.org. Uh, account number 226755, or give us a call. We've got some uh, information that you can do uh, just by sending in some something for our ministry. Once again, we appreciate you taking time to listen to us and pray for the bikers in your community and all across America because these guys need Jesus Christ, and we are hoping to be the hope that they can find him. God bless you. My name is Terry Morgan. I am the pastor of McGee First Assembly of God. I'm also a member of Honor Bound Motorcycle Ministries and a part of its district leadership team. Uh, I'm just going to tell you a quick testimony today about my life. I was raised in a good family. I had great parents, but at the age of about 15 decided that uh, I knew more than they did and began to live my life for myself and got involved in drugs and alcohol and uh, it really, my life began to center around those things. Uh, I was a man that could go to work every day and then drink himself to sleep every night. Uh, I did work, I was a functional addict, but uh, every day was a day that uh, I was going to drink or use drugs or whatever was handy. At the age of about 32, I began to seek the Lord, uh, just remembering my roots and began to think that there had to be something more to life than just seeking for your next high. And so I turned around and just began to read my Bible. And as I read my Bible, uh, I just began to cry out to God. And uh, I wanted to change, and I decided I was going to change. 
but I told myself this lie for so many years that I could change any time I wanted to, and then I found out after all those years of use and addiction that I could not change no matter how much I wanted to. So as I cried out to God one Saturday morning, I had an experience where God just showed up and showed out in my life. He touched me. He, he, he spoke a vision into my life, and immediately after that, my life changed. A man that drank every day, no longer had to have alcohol or drugs, turned my life around, uh, immediately uh, went to church, uh, gave my testimony at an Assembly of God church in Warren, Arkansas, and uh, they were having revival just happened to be going on on that same day that I went and I went to the altar I felt like God wanted me to make a public profession of faith I got saved my whole family came in my wife uh, my three daughters and uh, it just grew from there we came back the next night and uh, the evangelist spoke on the baptism of the Holy Ghost and I went forward and was immediately baptized with the Holy Ghost, with the evidence of speaking in tongues. And God has changed my life and blessed me so much. And I tell people all the time, I've lived on both sides of this thing. And I can tell you that it's best with God. It's nothing like having Jesus as your Savior. So no matter where you are today and what you've been or what, what you've been involved in, I can tell you Jesus wants to change your life for the better. Turn it over to him, and great things will happen in your life. God bless you. Hi, my name's Phil. This is my wife, Mary. And I just want to tell about the goodness and grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. I'm one which no more than just two and a half years ago, I was strung out on meth, uh, marijuana, alcohol, you name it. I like to call my testimony from the needle to my knees. And it was literally that. I fell to my knees one night and asked for God forgiveness and all that. And I got involved into a, uh, a biker church, of all things. And that really started opening my eyes to a lot of things. Um, I lost my uh, home. My wife and I were uh, on the verge of divorce. Uh, she had already filed. I'd moved out. I was living in, literally living in a storage shelter, storage bin. Uh, all my worldly possessions in front and the bed in the back. Um, job, in between jobs. I lost several good jobs because of meth and alcohol. My priorities were just 180 out like it normally does on people like that. Uh, God delivered me from that. God showed me. There's a better life. There's a better way to go. There's, there's, there's Jesus. We have so much to live for, so much to do in this time frame, that, this short time frame that we're on earth. Uh, I'm now president of our local honor-bound motorcycle ministry. Um, it's, just, it's just been a phenomenal road. Uh, one that I wish I'd have done years ago. So if you are struggling, if you have any idea that you need to get away from all that, it just takes one step, one word. Just cry out to Jesus. Just cry out and ask him to come into your heart, come into your life, because it will change, literally change your life. It will give you so much peace and so much joy. Uh, my wife and I have re reconciled. We're happier now than we've ever been. Uh, we go into church on a regular basis. We 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 tithe. Uh, God has blessed us tremendously in the last two years, and it's just just a road that I'm just looking forward to traveling on from now on. It's just amazing what God can do for you and for your family, your life. It's just I can't I can't stress enough. You know, if you have a problem, if you if there are, if there are issues. Uh, no matter how small or how big, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter to God. All it takes is one step. Cry out to the Lord. He can save you. He can bring you out of this. Hi, my name is Mary. Um, I just want to say that back in my teen years, um, 
I've messed with alcohol and marijuana and just recently back in August of last year um, the, uh, the dear Lord above was uh, convicted me of these cigarettes and uh, I smoked since I was 15 years old and uh, he kept for two days he told me that I need to quit them nasty things and I wouldn't listen until two days later and here I am eight months later and no cigarettes thank you Jesus thank you thank you my name is Mike White uh, I come to know the Lord Jesus Christ November the 7th 1987 uh, prior to that date I was on drugs and uh, alcohol real bad I, I started my addiction when I was 16 years old and 17 I put a needle in my arm and uh, I went from there to worse I sold drugs, uh, not on a big scale, but just to support my habit. I had tried to quit m many, many times, and uh, I, I never could get free. I could get free for a week or two, and then I'd always right back, right back in it. I tried suicide, uh, put a pistol to my temple, and uh, trigger wouldn't pull. And uh, yeah, that was so awesome, but. Uh, didn't acknowledge God uh, at all in any way uh, in my life. But shortly after that, uh, in my living room, uh, in my home, I prayed for about two hours or more trying to get saved. Didn't know how, didn't know anything about getting saved, and uh, didn't know anything about the Bible. Uh, but I had a preacher, a brother that preached five years, and I had never heard him preach. And so I called my mom up and uh, told her I wanted to get saved, but I couldn't get God to have anything to do with me. And she said, oh, yeah. And long story short, she called my brother. And her and my dad, my brother, came over. He explained to me salvation. I got saved at my coffee table. <laughs> got up and flushed my cocaine down the toilet, poured my liquor out. I smoked three or four packs of cigarettes a day, and I quit that that night, threw them away. Uh, never wanted anything since that day except the cigarette for about two weeks and I would just say Jesus help me I don't want that anymore and uh, I thank God that's been 29 years ago and I am free been set free ever since it is awesome awesome experience uh, if you think you have no hope Jesus is your hope he is your hope there is no other hope he can break every chain that binds you, that holds you. He can break them, and you won't have to go through an addiction program. I never had any counseling, any program. He set me free. Thank you, Jesus. My name is Tony Hatfield. Right now, I'm a member of the Christian Motorcycle Association out of Hatfield, Arkansas. Blessed to be a part of an organization that I, I feel like opens the doors for ministry opportunities, and not just within the CMA, but with other groups, with other organizations that I run into just uh, being out on a bike. And, um, I thank God that he blessed me being able to buy a motorcycle a few years back after being without one for a long time. And more than that, I thank God for Let's see, right now, it's been just a little over 14 years ago he reached out and got a hold of this heart and brought me out of a life of drugs and alcohol and uh, running wild all over this country. But I was raised in a Christian home. Mom and Daddy pastored a church when we were kids and raised me knowing the Word. And they raised me instilling the Word in my heart and in my mind. But... You know, a lot of us do. When I got to the age where I could, I just, I went wild and tried to get my hands into everything that I knew that I shouldn't, but everything that I thought might might add a little excitement to life. And finally end up married and got kids. And one day I was sitting holding my baby girl and when she was about a year and a half old and I just got to looking at her and remembering back in my mind and just thinking what a miracle birth is and got to thinking about the life that I'd been living and God started dealing with my heart and I tried my best to run. I jumped in my truck. I was driving a truck at the time and, and done everything I could to run away from that feeling in my heart that God was knocking. But 
I finally had to stop. And I'm going to say this here, and I've said it many times before. Before this night, the only thing I'd ever heard of Muscle Shoals, Alabama, was Leonard Skinner sang a song about it. But, but I was in Muscle Shoals, Alabama, when I finally pulled over behind a truck stop and cried out to God. And he cleansed his heart. Fourteen years, and I'm not perfect. I still struggle every day, but I know that I serve a, a righteous, sovereign God that when I call out on him, he's faithful and just to forgive my failures, to forgive my sins. If there's anything that I can say to anybody that might be watching or listening to this, it don't matter where you've been, it don't matter where you're at, God is right there. He's reaching down, and all you got to do is call on his name. It don't matter how deep of a hole you've got yourself into, how far in sin you've gone, you call on his name, and he's there to reach down and pull you out of it, to set your feet on that path that leads to righteousness. Keep your eyes on Calvary. Keep your eyes fast on what Jesus did that day on Calvary when he laid his life down. He did it for you. He did it for me. He did it for everybody that's walking the face of this earth. And I say right now, God bless each and every one of you. Friends, once again, you've heard some amazing testimonies. And, you know, Jesus is the answer. You know, many of us, including myself, we've all tried to quit doing certain things. May we go so long and then we'd be right back at it. Uh, I myself was a former stripper and a prostitute and had multiple addictions, and I tried many times to quit doing certain things. And a matter of fact, I was even in a government-run treatment center twice. But it wasn't until my mother led me to the Lord over the phone and I made a whole heart commitment. And, folks, that's what it's all about. It's about making a whole heart commitment to the Lord with your whole heart. And when you do that, the Holy Spirit comes in and gives you the power to be able to live it. So I would encourage you to say a prayer with me. And if you really mean it, the Holy Spirit will come in and he will give you the power. And not only will he give you the power, but he becomes your comforter, your guide, your teacher, and your best friend. You know, he said he'd never leave us or forsake us. And you know, he really never has. It's just that we never acknowledged this. He's, uh, he's been there all along. We just never realized it. But you know what? The Lord is revealing himself to you right now, and he would love for you to, to commit your life to him with your whole heart. Just say yes to Jesus. So say this prayer after me, and if you mean it with your whole heart, you're going to have that new life. Just say, Jesus, I ask you to forgive me of my sins. I'm willing to leave the old life behind and follow you with my whole heart. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. Thank you for loving me, never giving up on me. Thank you, Jesus. I love you. Amen. Now, folks, if you said that, you now have that new life. John 3, 3 says that we must be born again. And you see, even people that's never been in addictions, people that uh, seem like, they, you know, that they're good people because they don't drink, do drugs, you know, run around, they're faithful. But yet, we're all born with a sinful nature, and we all need Jesus. And once you do say that prayer, and if you said it and you meant it with your whole heart, 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things are passed away, and all things have become new. You are a new person now. Just thank him, go to church, read your Bible, and quit hanging with the people you used to hang with, because otherwise you'll be right back at it. And you know what helps keep me on the right path? Is I watch what I put into my eyes, like TV, movies. I listen, I, I'm careful of the music I listen to, because all those things trigger uh, you and make you want to think about going back to your old life. Because you know what? If you think about it, when you let it go, you're not really missing anything. You know, the Bible says sin is pleasurable for a season. Yes, it may be pleasurable for a season. But the word season means a little while because you know yourself that when we've done certain things, there was always consequences. Oh, but anyway, I just want to thank you for watching this program. I'm so glad that you've tuned in and that you've given your life to Jesus right now. So God bless you, Jesus loves you, and so do I. Whose mother's prayers made the difference in her life. Divorced and desperate, Candy Rose looked to make quick money to support herself and her children.
this decision drove her to a life of drugs, alcohol, and behavior that caused both pain and disappointment. It's often said that a mother's love is enduring, even when the pain of disappointment pierces her heart. She drank so heavily that uh, she began to get ideas that uh, there was greater things in life that she could do. And she became very bold. And she formed her business called Candy Rose Productions. And uh, it was a very satanic thing, actually. Candy Rose Productions was no common enterprise. It was a striving strip business. And its owner, Candy Rose, cared little about her mother's feelings during this time, but felt well on her way to fame and fortune. It's like the devil was overtaking her whole life and destroying her. Fortunately for Candy, her mother's love refused to give up or let her go. I loved her through all that with unconditional love. Not only was she my daughter, she uh, was a soul that needed loving and caring for. And as I've always told everyone that has someone who's out there lost and not saved, to never close the door of your heart or the door of your home. And that's what the devil does. He's the wolf. He, gets a, he likes to just get us and carry us on off. John 10, 10, the Bible says that the thief has come to steal, kill, and destroy. And I feel mad, too, because I am sick and tired of the devil trying to get us into addictions and or pull us back in addictions and to keep us from the one who loves us and died for us. The freedom feels good. I have no addictions on me tonight, and it feels good. I am not tormented. It's a torment. You know, many of you know what I'm talking about. When you get those urges, all of a sudden something triggers you and you get those urges and then you find yourself doing it again, it is not a good feeling. And you, and then pretty soon, especially if you give in to it, sin is pleasurable for a season, but it's just a season. It's just that little while. That little bit of pleasure ain't worth nothing. It ain't worth losing your soul over. It ain't lose, worth in your peace. It ain't worth losing your family over, your health everything it's a destroyer and that's what he does and you know it's not just the addictions of alcohol and drugs there are people in churches that are good people that so-called good people that never drank smoked chewed cussed but yet they need Jesus and the problem is they don't think they're a sinner they don't think that because they're not like the stripper or the prostitute or the addict that's over there remember the story in the Bible where the two are are coming to 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 uh, uh, worship the Lord and the one says I'm glad I'm not as bad as he is you know but I'll tell you what the Bible says all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God everybody needs Jesus I'm so glad he set me free because those addictions are awful I mean, you can be fine for a while, and all of a sudden, there it is. It's calling your name. But I'll tell you what, there's a name above every name that has come to set you free, and his name is Jesus. Pastor preached on the blood the other day. He preached on the blood. The blood is what has got me free. It wasn't candy. It wasn't good old candy that's changed. No, it's Jesus by the blood. All I had to do was say yes and mean it with my whole heart. Not just confess it now. I'm telling you, you got to watch it on, on, on some of these TV preachers. Just say the prayer and then act. Then they act like you're good to go for the rest of your life. Well, let me tell you, the word repentance is in the Bible. John the Baptist came preaching, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Jesus came saying, repent for the kingdom of heaven. You know what repent means? Turn. You know, you're going one way, you're living your life as you please without him being your guide, without him being your boss. Say, master, Lord and Savior. Lord means master. You asked to be a savior. You want to be saved, but yet you want to hang on to your stuff. Well, you got to let go of it. But when you let go, it feels good and he gives you the power to do it. That's why I, I guess you just do it with your whole heart. When you do it with your whole heart, that's where the freedom comes, the peace, the joy, and the purpose. 
Oh, what a difference he's made in my life. Oh, what a difference he's made in my family. Man, you couldn't, you couldn't get me to go back where I come from. There ain't nothing back there but heartache and misery and problems. He brought me out of the miry clay. He set my feet on a rock to stay. He put a song in my soul today. I ain't going back to where I used to be. I'm going forward. I like where I'm at now. I like what I, I, I'm becoming, what he made of me. I ain't going back. With God's grace and his mercy, I ain't going back. Satan had already picked out my grave. His plan had moved forward to put me away. I drifted so far. Would anyone care that I'd soon be lost? I knew my destruction was a matter of time. But Jesus appeared and said, this one is mine. Now I'm safe from all harm. For he walked through the storm when he came looking for me. He came looking for me. had been since I did your eye surgery? That was 20 years ago this year, and I've still got perfect vision. Thanks, Mike. Man, that's great. Just yesterday morning, they let me know you were gone. McFarland Eye Centers, we're focused on your vision. I just encourage, if you're struggling with any kind of addiction or you know someone, uh, in, in your family or someone, just maybe one layer of, of connection of a person removed from you, please proactively take the initiative to reach out to them and say, hey, I saw this program where, you know what, there's actually help, there's actually hope. We'd be happy to talk to you, happy to bring you in or talk to you about that loved one that needs to come in. This is Richie and Carly Willis, uh, owners of Willis and Sun Roofing of Hot Springs. Uh, we have local offices here in Hot Springs and Conway. Uh, we're serving central Arkansas and surrounding areas. Um, we're building the kingdom of God one roof at a time. Uh, we're licensed, bonded, and insured. and uh, We take pride in our work, and we're just glad to get to know you today, and thank you for an opportunity to roof your house. 